If there is one piece of common political wisdom one might think South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford would have absorbed over the course of his very public sex scandal, it's that that scandal stopped getting worse for him when he stopped talking about it. The governor apparently has not taken that to heart. This weekend, he wrote a newspaper op-ed explaining how famously cheating on his wife will make him better, better at pretty much everything. Quote, I've been humbled and broken as never before in my life and as a consequence have given up areas of control in a way that I never have before. And it is my belief that this will make me a better father, husband, friend, and advocate. You know the old adage, nothing improves a husband like him having an affair with a woman in Argentina. But going public seems to sort of be a theme this week for Governor Sanford and for other associates of C Street, the secretive ministry and living quarters for several members of Congress at which Governor Sanford and Senator John Ensign of Nevada both received some sort of counseling during their extramarital affairs. A number of other C Street affiliates are now going on the record about the shadowy organization, mainly to defend its secrecy. Senator Jim Inhofe of Oklahoma telling Roll Call newspaper, quote, it's a great place, and vowing to continue holding foreign policy meetings with African ambassadors at the C Street House. Former Ohio Congressman Tony Hall tells Politico.com the prayer breakfasts he attended at C Street were, quote, probably some of the best moments I had during the week, precisely because we closed the doors. C Street is also in the news anew because of something that happened on the House floor last week. A member of Congress, one with ties to C Street, argued against public funding for abortion services by saying that if there were public funding for abortion, Barack Obama might have been aborted as a fetus. Also, Clarence Thomas. If you think of it in human terms, there is a financial incentive that will be put in place, paid for by tax dollars, that will encourage women who are, in, are single parents, living below the poverty level, to have the opportunity for a, a free abortion. If you take that scenario and apply it to many of the great minds we have today, who would we have been deprived of? Our president grew up in those similar circumstances. If that financial incentive was in place, is it possible that his mother may have taken advantage of it? Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court Justice, if those circumstances were in place, is it possible that we would be denied his great mind? It's Representative Todd T. Hart, Republican of Kansas. I wonder how we settled on those two, Clarence Thomas and Barack Obama. What do they have in common? Congressman T. Hart was first elected as part of the Republican Revolution in 1994. He is now running for the United States Senate in Kansas. Joining us now is Jeff Charlotte, who wrote about Congressman T. Hart's affiliation with C Street in his book, The Family, The Secret Fundamentalism at the Heart of American Power. Jeff, thanks very much for joining us again. Really appreciate it. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me back. While you were undercover in the family doing the reporting for Harper's and for your book, you actually attended a meeting between Congressman T. Hart and Doug Coe, who's the longtime leader of the family. What happened at that meeting, and what, what impression did you get of Mr. T. Hart's position in the family? Yeah, it was a spiritual counseling session of precisely the site, uh, the sort that Ensign and, and Sanford were having. Um, and uh, uh, T. Hart uh, also sort of had sex in the brain, but of a different sort. He was very concerned with the number of babies Muslims are having. And he said Americans are killing too many of their babies while Muslims are having uh, too many. And we're go we need to have more babies and outlaw abortion so that we can win the race with the Muslim. And what happened was that Doug Coe, the leader of the family, uh, so that's fine as far as it goes, but it doesn't go far enough. He said to Congressman T. Hart, he says, I want you to think bigger. I want you to think of Jesus plus nothing, is what he said. It's a phrase they mean to suggest something they call the totalitarianism of Christ. And I think he was introducing T. Hart into the sort of the advanced lessons of the family. What's the totalitarianism of Christ? The totalitarianism of Christ, by that he meant, he said to T. Hart, um, uh, think about it's what you need to do is form a covenant, a private covenant with your brothers in Christ, men like Ensign and Coburn and, and, and Sanford. Uh, he says, when you do this, when you commit total loyalty to each other and you vow to keep up each other's secrets, you can accomplish much more. And he gave to Congressman T. Hart examples of guys who, who had done this very well, he thought. Uh, Hitler, Pol Pot, Osama bin Laden, and uh, Lenin, and, you know, it just makes 
makes your jaw drop, but Congressman Tehart uh, thought this was very wise advice. His invocation of um, the abortion of President Obama as a fetus on the floor of the House uh, was such a shock it even earned him some immediate booing in the House, which our, the House doesn't usually do that. This kind of wild argument um, that he made, does it make sense to you in the context of the family's teachings and philosophy, or is that the sort of thing they would frown on? I think it shows that he's not quite ready for prime time. I mean, the family, uh, what they're generally looking for is someone like uh, a Senator Ensign, uh, pre-affair, a much more polished figure, or Governor Sanford, a much more polished figure. But keep in mind, you know, several years ago, Governor Sanford was talking about winning the race with Muslims. Now he's changed a little bit. Instead of calling Obama a baby killer, he's saying, wouldn't it be a shame if we, uh, if Obama had been aborted? So for him, this is a lighter touch. This is a part of his grooming process, or what the family calls discipling, which is preparing him for what looks very likely a possibility that he'll be the next senator from Kansas. Jeff, when we are starting to hear more from members of Congress and political leaders who've been associated with the family, with C Street, they're sort of starting to come out of the woodwork a little bit, mostly defending the group. Mm -hmm. When we're hearing from these people who've had affiliations with the group, when they describe C Street, when they describe the family, does what they're saying comport with what you reported? Do you recognize the organization that they're describing when you think back on your own reporting on, what the, on the way the group works? Well, there are pieces of it. We saw a lot of the congressmen who are coming forth, like Senator Lindsey Graham and uh, Representative Randy Forbes. They talk about how this provides for them a, a safe space. Uh, Senator Sam Brownback, I remember him explaining to me the same thing. We are sitting in his kitchen in Kansas, and he said, uh, it's a safe space for us to talk about policy issues, political issues, even sex, sexual matters. Um, but what's really interesting about this is these very powerful men feeling that they're so vulnerable that they need a safe space. Senator DeMint uh, uh, even said, it's a place where uh, we remember that, uh, uh, you know, Senator this, Senator that, it's just a title. And they apparently forget, and no, it's not just a title. It's, an, it's a responsibility. It's a trust they've been given by the public. Um, that is very much in keeping with what happens there. But it is, uh, at the end of the day, far more political, as Senator Inhofe tried to uh, uh, talk about in, in his comments. Jeff Charlotte, contributing editor at Harper's, and author of the book The Family, The Secret Fundamentalism at the Heart of American Power, and a man who we have been keeping very busy lately. Jeff, thanks very much for joining us again tonight. Thank you, Rachel.